Hey there, everybody. Um, Tony here. And if you haven't noticed by now, my friends and I have not done the top five anticipated movies for fall winter 2023. Reason for that is because obviously with the strike going on, thankfully the writer's strike has been resolved as I am recording this video. I hope for the same with the actor's strike, but because of us not really knowing, you know, at the time how long the strike was going to go, and because of a few movie delays like with Dune Part 2, Challengers, I'm sure others, we just decided not to do it. Down the road, we will probably do something to replace for us not doing this video, but I figured I'd go ahead and still make my list. So if you are interested in looking at my list, um, in post form, just swipe right, press right thank you all so much and tiger power so this is what my top five list would have looked like but just to go through it very quick number six would have been the marvels yeah i just decided to throw in the top six for y'all because why not number five no one will save you number four chick it run dawn of the nugget number three Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, number two, Rebel Moon, part one, and number one, Alexa, how do you pronounce H-E-R-O-N? Okay, here's pronunciations. It is pronounced as Heron. And number one would have been the boy and the heron. It is a shame that we didn't do this video because it would have marked the first time since I started the anticipated segment all the way back in 2014 that an anime film would have been my most anticipated of the season. But still very much looking forward um, to the movie. So without further ado, here is our five movies we are thankful for. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Now you're all probably wondering, why am I gobbling? Because, hello there, everybody, and uh, happy Thanksgiving. This is 22 Turkey Dude. Yeah, that's right. I am going to be 22 Turkey Dude specifically for this special occasion um welcome everyone this is going to be a top five anticipated presents um video because as you all may have known there has been an actor's strike and a writer's strike but thankfully the writer's strike got resolved a while ago and the timing of this video is actually interesting because we are recording this video on november 8th and that's when we got the news that the actor strike has been resolved yeah because of that it looks like we don't have to do another different idea like we're doing right now to cover um replacing not doing anticipated videos so it looks like we will be good to return to doing the anticipated spring but i'm just more happy that you know the actor deal um and executives need to stop being greedy but yeah the reason we are doing this thanksgiving video is because we did not do the anticipated for fall winter 2023 it was a choice that me and my friends have made it was a hard choice as for this list by the way this list is going to be optional on whether you want it to be your top five list or an a random order list my list personally is going to be a random five it's not going to be ranked but I'm sure some of my guests, when they introduce themselves, they'll let you know. Let's go ahead and now introduce everyone, one by one, starting off with the first, uh, I guess, turkey of the night, Violet. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, it is me. Even though I don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but we, we're still here uh, for, for the gobble gobbles, I guess. And I'm also vegan, so I, I really, I, I shouldn't be saying that. But anyways... We're here. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you for having me on here, Tony. Uh, and I'm glad to be everyone else here uh, tonight, this evening. Um, what else is there? Is there? Is there to say? Um, yeah, I'm just glad to be here um, and talk about. Uh, you know, it's interesting because, like, obviously, like I do miss the top five anticipated, uh, but I will say this gives me an opportunity to talk about some of my favorite films of all time. Um, so, yeah, let, let's do it. Oh, out of curiosity, is your list ranked or out of order? Oh, my apologies. Um, I've debated it, but like I, it, it okay. It's kind of like a mix of both, to be honest with you, because like 
there's like one specifically I'm gonna talk about last. That's the one I wanna like highlight the most, but like the one that like impacts me the most, I'm gonna talk about first. Does that make any sense at all? I hope that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Cool. Awesome, awesome. Our next turkey we got here is Brian Mendoza. Woo! Get me out of here, you guys. Listen to me. Oh, I'm still trapped in here since the anticipating video. Help! Help! Brian, I'm sorry. So but you got like probably like 23 more years in there. I'm sorry. I'm going to go to the Seinfeld apartment next. So I'm really sorry, but right now Mr. B is actually going around uh, town. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> I thought he said Mr. Beast for a second. No, no, no. <laughs> no yeah, I'm man, I'm, that. I'm definitely going to get a Mr. Beast burger. Mr. Beast. I've already broken Brian. <laughs> Just keep your eyes out on the sheets tonight, Brian. Hey! What did you just say? What? <laughs> Jordan, I'm a lesbian. What did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> I said for him to keep his eye on his sheets tonight. Oh, I was like, I was so confused. I thought you were saying something right. I, I was like, Jordan, I, I only, like, well, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> If I was going to say a lesbian joke, I would have said matching carpets. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, and very quick, Brian, is your list ranked or out of order? Uh, pretty random, honestly. All right. Now, but, uh... our next turkey here <laughs> is Jordan Farrell. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here for this Thanksgiving special. I'm here to... I do kind of celebrate the holiday, even though it's a holiday of a bunch of white people wiping out my people. But hey, I do enjoy me a turkey. I do enjoy me my Thanksgiving parade. I enjoy, you know, spending time with the family, spending time with people I don't like. But I pretend to be nice to them because it's Thanksgiving. And I'm looking forward to this special video. I, it gets an opportunity for me to want to talk about movies I like and recommend movies that some of y'all uh, may not have seen. And, uh, for my oh, list, cool. I'm going to go off a of random. So I'm just literally going to read off whatever I feel like talking about for per order. So I don't have a Sounds top five. Good. Yeah. The next turkey here, even though he's a duck, is Andrew Hayes. <clears throat> I just... Uh have these words of wisdom that I would like to share with all of you. <clears throat> My baby don't mess around because she loves me so, and this I know for sure. Hey, uh. That was, that was, that was so emotional, Andrew. <laughs> wow. Millions oh, of children were saved. And, and uh, it will be random. And then our other turkey here is Diego Coya. Hello, everyone. Um, glad to be back in Tony's channel. Uh, there's a lot of movies I'm thankful for. It was hard to narrow it down to five, but I'm actually going to be doing a ranked list. So um, excited to share it with you, with all of you. Our next turkey here is Henry Ewing. Well, hello, everyone. Thanks to some internet issues, I am recording my segment of 22 Tiger Dudes Thanksgiving Special from the future. Due to the SAG after strike, which is now resolved thankfully, we decided to do this instead of the anticipated video for fall of this year, which I think was a good move. So I'm excited to see what everyone was thankful for. I know everyone is thankful for the masterpiece known as Turkey Town, but besides that, I'm excited to see. So with the anticipated videos, when we do them, we do honorable mentions. Um, originally, I wasn't really going to do honorable mentions for this thankful video, though. But if there are movies you're thankful for, but you didn't put in your list, uh, everyone is welcome to. I'm just going to actually do this on a whim. This is going to be our first time doing honorable mentions with no list 
present. Ratatouille, um, my favorite Pixar movie for teaching me that combining foods is a really good thing. How critiquing goes and, you know, finding your own passion with foods and just life in general. So I'm thankful for that movie. I feel like it would be a missed opportunity if I didn't mention the Winnie the Pooh franchise. Whether you're talking about the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh, the search for Christopher Robin, the Tigger movie, Piglet's big movie, all these movies I grew up with as a kid and cherish and do still cherish now. I have to really thank because that franchise taught me a lot of valuable lessons about friendship and loving and caring for the ones you're surrounded with and no matter how tough life gets to look at the positive things there's just a lot of valuable lessons i take from that franchise that i'm super thankful for and i'm just thankful to that franchise for making my childhood as pure and magical as it is and that franchise to this day still means a lot to me this one i was originally going to put in my list but i'll go ahead and mention the dark knight trilogy for furthering my love of batman even more I've loved Batman since I was a kid. He's my favorite DC superhero, and probably even like superhero in general. I dressed up as Batman for Halloween. I even dressed up as Batman for the Dark Knight Rises Midnight Show. So yeah, I have to thank the entire Dark Knight trilogy for making me love Batman even more thanks to how Christopher Nolan portrayed Christian Bale's Batman for being a much more vulnerable and sympathetic character. Alrighty, alrighty. So I do have you i guess combo mentions when i was going through like the possible uh things i could put on this uh list like i, I first thought about like i get like my five like favorite movies which always fluctuate like like my favorite movie like is my favorite movie but like the rest kind of just go back and forth but i kind of went down the, the list to like the ones that like the meaning of them mean the most to me i suppose it's really tough though because arguably like if i had to rank like my second third and like four favorite movie are like not on there. The first one I want to give a shout out to is David Cronenberg's Dead Ringers. Um, that is probably my second favorite film of all time. I don't know, there, it's hard to explain really just because I have to get into so much detail, but like I just think that movie covers like sexuality um, and just like being like connected to someone's body and like, but like wanting to like desire like the emotional feelings they have because their body and all that stuff, I think like brilliantly and I just love that film a lot. Um, I never want to give honorable mention to, which is probably, I guess, my third favorite film of all time, is Jonathan Glazer's Under the Skin. That movie is, yeah, again, another movie um, that deals with, like, many themes about, like, like bodies and stuff like that. And obviously it deals with it, like, again, like, Dead Ringers does to an extent, obviously, but, like, Under the Skin, like, kind of starts off as, like, as, like a really, like, scary, like, disturbing, like, horror film that has a lot of atmosphere. And as Marcus goes on and on, kind of, like, morphs into this, like, very, like, surprisingly, like, emotional, but still, like, pretty, like, messed up, like, sort of, like, tale. And then I guess the other one I want to give on much to before I get into some random other ones is, I guess, if I had to do a four pair film, is that Bellatar's uh, San Tongo. I saw that film in theaters in 2019, and um, that experience changed my life, and that film means a lot to me. Again, another, like, pretty bleak, like, disturbing film, but, like, the, just, like, the power that film has on me is on, like, anything else that I've ever had. And then I guess a few other ones I want to give a shout out to. Uh, probably Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk because if people uh, don't know, like I kind of like fell out of like love of film a little bit, and then I saw that film in IMAX seventy millimeter opening night, and like it changed my life, and like um, I just it just like reunited my love for film, and I'm really like thankful for that. And it was super cool to see like Oppenheimer two times in IMAX seventy millimeter this past summer, um, and yeah, and I just love that film for that reason. Um, another one I, I want to give a shout out to that I'm so sad it's not on here, but uh, E.T. the Actual Terrestrial. That's kind of like the one that really like started for me with film. And I still love that film, uh, but I just didn't make the list. Those are just a few I wanted to highlight. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, this list was hard, but I had to sacrifice three out of the list. Um, I got to give a mention to Field of Dreams. Um, that's a movie I revisited a couple of years ago at an adult perspective and it still gets me really emotional. Um, another baseball movie, funny enough, uh, The Sad Lot. Um, that one's a childhood favorite of mine, one of my childhood favorites. And the third article mention, uh, that song had to go off the list, but uh, Back to the Future. I watched that so many times, it really made me obsessed with time travel, even though not real or anything. I just found it very fascinating as a kid. And I still do. So, yeah. Yeah, this was a hard list because I have a lot of movies that I guess you say I'm thankful for, but things that impact me. 
Uh, for my first one, I'll have to say the the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, I um, I wasn't really as into fantasy until or world building. And I grew up when those movies came out. I was like, I was like this uh, little when those movies came out. And I remember getting that big uh, box set trilogy and watching the appendices. And my film school was essentially built through those documentaries and built through that storytelling of those three movies. It really helped me understand companionship and loyalty towards one another. For the second one, this almost made it onto the list, and it was the Grand Budapest Hotel. I'd say it's my personal favorite Wes Anderson film. I just like the, the laid-back atmosphere. Of course, I like the way it's shot, the color palette. I just liked that it felt like a fairy tale in a place in a world where it's possible. I like Ralph Fiennes. I like the subtle dark humor. And I like how the movie ends. The movie and it's probably, I can't think of any other way to end a movie than the Grand Budapest Hotel. For my third one, I probably have to say uh, Man of Steel. Uh, interesting enough, it's the 10th uh, anniversary of this year. But uh, years ago, because um, I used to do reviews on Facebook, and that was the first year I did reviews, and Man of Steel happened to be my favorite movie that year, and it's still one of my personal favorite movies. Uh, it's the one super movie I relate to most personally. It's the one I get the most emotionally invested. It's, to me, the most ambitious most creative superhero movie and not a lot of superhero movies go as ambitious and personally deep in my opinion as man of steel those are my in, uh, honorable mentions at the top of my head so i go on to the next person <laughs> um i do not have that Andrew, Andrew, I know, I know you're thankful for migration coming out this season, right? I know you're absolutely <laughs> Merry Christmas supporting to you. your kind. Andrew texted, told me that he's excited that movie more than any other movie this year. That's what he told me. Pinky poo poo. Huh? That movie is Pinky poo poo. That's crazy, Andrew. I have no honorable mentions. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I was really looking forward to hearing you talk about Cat in the Hat, Andrew. Also, Stinky Poo Poo. That, yo, you're crazy for that day. Anyways, I guess moving on. Alright, um, I also have no honorable mentions. I only have one honorable mention for this list, and that is Spirited Away, a really fantastic film that I recommend if you haven't seen it already. My favorite animated film of all time. Let's do this. Like I said, definitely a different kind of deal we've done, but excited. And I'm going to bring my friend uh, Dobbler uh, to help out. So let's go ahead and get into our number five. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Number five. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Okay, so for my random number five, I'm going to go ahead and put in The Mask of Zorro. Now, the reason I've decided to put The Mask of Zorro in my thankful list is because that is the movie, well, that one and Legend, actually, um, but I'm going to just mention one Zorro movie. It is one of my favorite uh, movies. I love The Mask of Zorro. And, you know, before Marvel came in with Ang Lee's Hulk or Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies or the X-Men movies, before all those came into the picture, Mask of Zorro really kind of was the first movie to make me, like, truly, like, be in awe of a hero. A hero with a sword and he has this really nice suave personality and I even dressed up as Zorro for Halloween. He even did the sword thing so I have very nostalgic memories of that. 
And of course, shout out to Antonio Banderas for being an awesome Zorro, not just in these movies, but in Puss in Boots, because you can argue that Puss in Boots is basically a cat version of Zorro. I love the action, the cinematography, the direction by Martin Campbell is just excellent. I obviously love the dynamic between him and Catherine Zeta-Jones, and the opening scene with Anthony Hopkins is really great too. If you've never seen Mask of Zorro, Highly recommend it. It's definitely a special movie to me. That's really my introduction to what a movie hero truly is like. I guess you could say in a way he's kind of like what Indiana Jones was to people when he first started out. So that is why um, Mask of Zorro is my number five because he made me just really be in awe of heroes in general. Alrighty, alright. Um, so... Again, it's sort of like a random order, uh, but the first one I am going to talk about is my favorite poem of all time. Uh, like, this is definitely my favorite poem of all time. Uh, so, like, we'll just talk about it first. Uh, so, first one I want to talk about is uh, Chantal Ackerman's Jean Zoman. Uh, yes, I would say the full title, but, like, I, I, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of it, so I'll just say Jean Zoman. Um, so this one's interesting because, um, I did like a review of this movie on my YouTube channel, like over five years ago, and I keep it up because like, it is like my favorite film. So like, it's like the only like film review I really have up on there. So I'm like, okay, I'll keep it up. But, um, you know, it's interesting because like back when I like reviewed it, um, you know, I was really enamored with like it technically and stuff like that. And like, it had like this like emotional quality to me, but, um, I couldn't really put like my finger on it really at the time. Um, and, like, as I've, like, grown up and, like, I I've gone through, like, a lot of, like, changes and stuff like that, um, I, I, the, the film for me has taken on, like, a different, like, meaning for me, um, and it, it, it truly, for me, like, I know, like, this is, like, a big, like, um, common consensus about the film, but for me, like, I've never seen, like, femininity, like, displayed, like, the way it is in, in that film, and it speaks to me as much as it does, like when you look back to like Chantal Ackerman, she's talking about how the film like was made, like a love letter to her mother. Like I watched the movie and there's so much that I see in that movie of like my own mother. Um, and I just like, I just get so like overwhelmed in that. You know, that's sort of like, like I guess like a common theme with like my favorite films like this and like San Tonga where like, yes, I am into these like pretty like epic, like long, like grand like films and like vignettes. But like the thing about it is like, I think there's just something for me of like immersing myself in these like, environments and confinements for such a long period of time and like you feel like the atmosphere and the emotion um just by like just understanding like like the surroundings and like the body language and stuff like that so when like the moments happen in the film that hit the hardest they really deeply impact me and obviously i have to connect to it on a story level too and i do that with this film the most like i saw this film in theaters earlier this year um after like it got number one on the set and sound list which is still like insane to me it was it was just like such like a crazy experience seeing a film that I admire that much like such like on a massive screen and like the crowd and just like you know it, it just kind of hit me then that like it is like my favorite film it genuinely genuinely like has actually like impacted like who I am as like a person and so yes that's my uh, no, that's my first one I want uh, just I'm so glad Aaron that is not going bad during this I'm getting Woo! like very worried about this but uh here we go um. My number five is The Karate Kid. Um, this is a movie I put on when I'm not having my best days. It's one of those, like, rewatchable movies. I didn't see this movie until, like, Christmas Eve three years ago, believe it or not. I was, like, really into Cobra Kai. I just finished season two. I was like, okay, I'll just finally watch this. And then I, I just fell in love with it. There's just something about this movie that, even though I was like 20, I felt the relatability to uh, Ralph Macchio's character. It's a coming of age story. It's another dog story. It's from the director of Rocky. It has like that inspiring sports motivational soundtrack. It's like one of the best soundtracks ever, really. You know, there's just something that this movie really helped me during the pandemic, which, oh uh, God, 2020 was just not the best year for all of us and I needed something like this during Christmas Eve to tell you the truth that uh, I get really emotional watching these because uh, the life lessons that that is taught in this franchise still stays with me 
years later, I think about these quotes. It helps me get through the day, you know. Um, I think that's my favorite thing about movies in general. Um, I like every genre. Um, I feel like my favorites now are the ones that, like, get me evolving as a human. I think that's the power of cinema, really. And this is an example of one of them. I don't know what to say about The Karate Kid. It's a classic. If you haven't seen it yet already, you know, please watch it. So that's my number five. Short and your mic is muted. Uh-oh. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> fucked up in a while. Oh, no. <laughs> That, that was a real. Ed, that was good. a real turkey. That was a real turkey move right there, Jordan. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh. All right. So I think for my number five, this is actually the only live action movie on my list. I wasn't trying to make it like that on purpose. It was just so many movies at the top of my head. I would kick myself in the feet if I don't mention uh, Gremlins, um, produced by Chris. Christopher Columbus, Steven Spielberg, directed by Joe Dante. I remember watching that movie so much as a kid, and I still watch it over and over again to the point where I've went through VHS copies. And years ago, I went through my DVD copies until they finally died out, and I have my current Blu-rays of Gremlins 1 and 2 right now. Um, I just like the filmmaking. I liked uh, um, watching behind the scenes about how much Joe John Dante grew up on classic monster movies and decided to make this just a silly, fun horror comedy. And I just like the small town uh, vibe of how something so innocent could just go chaotic at the same time. Uh, and I, I just like the whole the bizarre, the bizarre humor and the bizarre nature of it all that looking back at it, I don't know how I was allowed to watch that as a kid. If I'm not obsessed with Scooby-Doo, I'm obsessed with, not obsessed with Spider-Man, I'm obsessed with Gremlins. I have almost everything Gremlins. I have two Gremlins, two Gizmo plushies. I have Gremlins Funko Pops. I have other merch. I have a, a novelization. I have a book and i think i have some film reels from gremlins it's one of the first few movies to really spark me to want to become a filmmaker where i would just dream up dream scenarios of gremlin stuff or make drawings of gremlins all the time or just recreate scenes from the, the gremlins one and gremlins two especially the movie theater climax which to me is in my opinion one of the greatest film climaxes ever because of just taking some taking a place that essentially is our church and just making a complete disaster out of it and once in a while i will watch snow white and gremlins at the same time if you've seen gremlins you know why mm -hmm. and so that's why it's my number five and uh fingers crossed for gremlins three gremlins three please that's okay that's okay Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let me let me talk about this one first, because why not? Let's start off with a hot and heavy one. Uh, I guess my number five, even though I'm not ranking them, or my first one, I should say. That's what I should say. Is uh, Whiplash. Now, uh, the reason I chose Whiplash is because um, well, it's a very specific, weird reason, but I felt the need to talk about this. So, uh, if, in my humble opinion, I think 2014 is the best year I've ever experienced with movies. That year had banger after banger after banger. And, you know, 2014 was just a, a, a special year in my life. And a big reason of that was because of uh, the year of movies. So, I, I pretty much chose Whiplash because I couldn't choose every movie that I loved from 2014. So I chose Whiplash uh, to kind of represent the ye movie year that was 2014 because that was my favorite movie of that year. And I am, uh, this is my way of saying I am thankful for not only Whiplash, for making the 2014 a special year for me. So yeah, Whiplash. 
Okay, so uh, my number five is The Suicide Squad from 2021. Um, and it's very simple as to why. Uh, for context, the 2016 film, um, it was my most anticipated film of that year. So um, after I watched that first one, I was very disappointed. Uh, probably the most disappointing film I've ever seen in my life. But um, as I was thinking about that movie, I always got like upset. I'm like, well, I hope there's another, you know, sort of, movie from that franchise that could you know redeem itself and that new and the suicide squad came out and i'm so happy because i personally i love it it's um one of my favorite comic book movies uh, of all time for sure and uh, i'm just thankful it exists because now when i think about suicide squad i don't have to think about the 2016 film i can just cite this one the the far better one in my opinion so number five is the suicide squad so i don't really have an order for this list so I'm just gonna go like the first movie, second movie, etc. So the first movie I'm thankful for is E.T. the Extraterrestrial. I first saw this movie when I was about five, I think. I grew up with like the 20th anniversary edition, which yeah, but that's like the movie that is the reason why I'm interested in movies like even to this day like I just think that the world that like Steven Spielberg built here is fantastic and yeah John Williams score is one of my favorite scores maybe my favorite score ever and yeah definitely a childhood classic that I will forever be thankful for. Okay, everyone. Now, Goblo Gobbler over here says we are on number four. Number two. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Number two. Yeah, Wait, did it go out of order on me? What the hell? Okay, so <laughs> oh, no! Let me, let me okay, let me play one until it actually plays like, number four. Number three. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> okay, let's try Gobble, gobble, gobble! No. Gobble, 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 Number one, number one! <laughs> I don't know what happened with number four. <laughs> yeah. 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 Gobble, gobble, gobble. Number four. Gobble, gobble, gobble. My number four, when I was thinking about what to put in my thankful video, because, you know, the ones I put in this list are the ones that I feel are very, like, significant reasons. And for my random order of number four, I've decided that I'm going to include revenge of the sith so here's an interesting story now as a young kid um this may come as a shock but star wars i did not find that fascinating when i was like six seven eight i actually wasn't really into star wars when i was was like that young i have memories of walking past my dad and him watching like the empire strikes back and i still have the vhs's for the original trilogy actually but it really wasn't until i saw revenge of the sith where i went oh star wars is cool and the thing is the interesting thing about how i even saw this movie and why it became my first star wars movie is because i haven't seen the phantom menace <clears throat> i haven't seen it of the clones at that time the reason we saw this in theaters was because my family really wanted to go see this movie in theaters big family i'm talking about like me my brother my mom my dad my aunts my uncles my cousins probably one of the biggest movie going experiences ever when it comes to like coming with like a packed family and when i just saw revenge of sith i was just all like wow what have i been missing for my life so 2005 technically kind of like really marked the birth of tony actually being into star wars and then from there that's when later on um, i'm gonna say maybe like a few years later that's when i finally got into watching the original trilogy from there i finally watched the phantom menace and attack of the clones which yeah they simply exist not really a fan of those two but 
Obviously, I do have a big appreciation for the original trilogy, and most of the sequel trilogy too. But yeah, Revenge of Sith, um, it really is the Star Wars movie I have to thank for really getting me into Star Wars. This is my favorite of the prequel trilogy. I think the acting by Hayden Christensen, it's like his best performance of the entire trilogy. Uh, um, obviously, the back and forth between Anakin and Obi-Wan. Uh, the dynamic is really just so good right there. A lot of really good writing um, that... I don't really think George Lucas gets, like, enough credit on, but, but I think he excels their dyna dynamic, like, really well. Um, the action is very exciting. And then, of course, you have the excellent, excellent climax at the volcano with the score, Duel of the Fates, playing the background, and just literally one of the best scores ever. There's a reason people talk about that score, because it's just epic on every sense of the word it's a movie that i really really like a lot and it is the movie i have to say i'm very very thankful to have because if it wasn't for the movie i probably wouldn't be into star wars the way that i finally am now so that's why i had to pick revenge of sith for my number four well the rest of this order until the last one is a little random so it was more random but i think the first one i'm going to talk about is um this one will not be a shocker i think mean, all these are not a shocker if you know me uh, but uh, this one I just talk about quite a bit. Uh, we're going to talk about the Wachowski sisters, The Matrix. Yes. Okay. So um, there's many, many reasons why this one I'm very thankful for. Uh, but, you know, I think just to boil it down to just like the core of it, the films I'm really into nowadays are definitely like the films that make me the most like emotional and into the most like vulnerable places. But um, you know, I grew up, like, really, really admiring, like, action films. Like, Mad Max Fury Road is still one of, like, my very favorite films, for example. But, like, you know, growing up, the main one besides Mad Max Fury Road that, like, really, really speaks to me still is, like, The Matrix. Um, and The Matrix, obviously, for, like, many reasons, also has a very, like, deeper meaning for me. Um, but I think that it just is, like, I think what makes it resonate with me so much and why I'm like, so, like, thankful it's, like, part of, like, um, my life is just because, like, I just, it's so, like, rare to see a film that just, like, ignites so much like energy within you and just so much like adrenaline and so much like awe like the craftsmanship and just like the story and just like the music and just like so much about and like the effects of there's just so much about that film that like you can absolutely like like adore and like, like praise but for me it's all of that but also like combined with just like it's so like rare to like see a film like that where like i just like as a person i feel so like empowered watching it um, and I just, and I, and I just love the film forever for that. And I'm just so, like, thankful it's, like, a part of, like, my life because, like, it's genuinely, like, helped me with, like, uh, my artistic journey the last few years and just, like, finding stuff that, like, I can, like, fully, like, embrace and, like, feel, like, welcome in and just, like, adore. Um, and yeah, no, I mean, there's, there's many reasons why I absolutely love that film. You know, it's also cool to have, like, a pretty, like, fun movie. Uh, that's one of my favorites. So that's why The Matrix is the next one I wanted to mention. My next pick in the movie... I literally watched for the first time in like 10 years of last year and my next pick is the Shawshank Redemption. This is a movie I only saw once at the time. I It was a weird phase in my life. It was during the phase where I'm like, I don't care about animation. I just want to watch the serious stuff. Like I was into like The Godfather, you know, Lawrence of Arabia. It was until this film, I was like, I want to see this movie. I want to see what this movie's all about. And ever since I saw that movie, I was like 12. I watched Shawshank when I was like very young. Not the right age to watch it. But something about it that resonated with me. And I think a very important thing in life is having friendships. I feel like that is something that we shouldn't live without we should have friendships all of our life you know the folks who help each other and this movie has a message of hope and it's an inspiring message i know it's not the happiest film out there but i just found it very powerful you know from the dialogue the script roger deacon cinematography it's just one of the best cinematography films ever and if you haven't seen this series just watch it i don't know maybe someone is watching it right now after filming this but if you do watch this movie right now um i hope you enjoy it um it's definitely different from other stephen king adaptations 
Um, I heard Stand By Me is another one that is really powerful I gotta watch still. But you know, Tim Robbins should get more talked about because I legit think he's like one of the best actors out there. And Morgan Cruz is just phenomenal in this movie. And that score, that score is just, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. So yeah, that is my number four, Shawshank Redemption. That's a classic from the 90s right there. Let's see. I think for my next one, I'm going to talk about uh, Castle in the Sky. It is um, a Studio Ghibli film, uh, a Hayao Miyazaki film to be exact. Uh, the first uh, film to be made under that studio, actually. And uh, one of my personal favorite Ghibli films. Uh, I remember there was a time back when I... Uh, for those who don't know, no, uh, in the early 2010s, I used to be homeless. I used to live in a hotel room. So we couldn't really afford uh, the local blockbuster that was literally across the street from us. So we had the library. And in that library, there was a collection of Ghibli movies. And this was right when I was young and I was getting into it because of Ponyo coming out and Arietti was coming out as well and we just grabbed that collection of movies Totoro we watched a bunch of times because that's my niece's favorite movie you know she'll tell you otherwise but it is her favorite movie but, but anywho but what stuck out to me was Castle in the Sky because I thought oh it's gonna be another super like laid back uh, kid, uh, kid adventure movie like Totoro and Bonnie was. I was blown away as a kid. I felt my imagination expanding. I felt uh, my love of fantasy flourished through that film, from the mechanical uh, ships, through the the towns, the industrial towns, the industrial people, small scale people going out to do big and extraordinary things. And that really stood out to me as a kid because I was essentially the main character in this film where you know I lived in a quiet area and I dreamed of going to bigger, bigger worlds, bigger adventures, you know, essentially changing my life for the better. I never felt that much imagination in a fantasy film since, you know, Dark Crystal or Labyrinth even. In fact, those are the other two movies from that era, time era that impacted me too. Well, with Castle in the Sky, it was the one movie that finally made me realize I knew what I wanted to make movies. And I should have known what type of movies I wanted to make because... I had a passion for drawing. I draw a lot. I like drawing a lot, drawing on a daily basis, and I still like drawing a lot, uh, even when I don't have as much time as I used to. But that night when I watched that movie, uh, it told me, wow, I want to do that. I want to make animated movies. I want to make an animated movie like Castle in the Sky, a movie that will spark the imagination of a kid generations later that spark that sense of adventure that sense of wow i can actually leave my imprisonment that is this boring generic life and i can go out and venture i was in love with the music i was in love with the paintings the way characters drawn in fact to this day anytime i'm animating or writing a story i always think about how how it's structured. I always look back at Castle in the Sky. I look back at any Ghibli movie. I think about how it's paced, how it's structured, how it's flow, how the character's feeling. I'm also what I also like about Castle in the Sky and any of the Ghibli films, including Miyazaki, is we get to have a lot of downtime with people, and those are just as uh, memorable as the big action sequences, fight scenes. Because it's really just showcasing the humanity of these people. And it, it really showed you that these weren't cartoon characters. These were just regular people that you probably ran into once in your life. 
And that's a movie I'm fairly thankful for because if it wasn't for that movie, I wouldn't be here with where my dreams are at, where my career is at, where my artistry is at, where I'm as a person, my philosophy. Uh, that's another thing. If it wasn't for Castle in the Sky, I wouldn't have been introduced to Hayao Miyazaki and getting to know the man, the myth, the legend, and the philosopher even, because a lot of my philosophy comes from that man. And a lot of my philosophy also comes from his animations, including Castle in the Sky. So yeah, that's a movie I am severely thankful for to this day. All right. Next one, I'm going to talk about Gracia. What? What'd you say to me? Migration? He oh, did say migration. <laughs> no, never. Are you getting a migration from this chat? Yeah, fuck yeah. Uh, come on, guys. We obviously all know that Andrew's going to talk about migration part two. And we're going to make a box hat out of it. We're going to ask vinegar syndrome to make the box hat. Guaranteed. Yeah, vinegar syndrome. Uh, <laughs> This is a separate <laughs> box set. <laughs> Next one I'm going to talk about classic from my childhood. Uh, that is Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Uh, you know, I'm just thankful for this one. Very simple. It's one that, uh, you know, I've watched since I was a kid. Uh, it's one that, uh, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, it's one, you know, whenever uh, you know, I'm feeling a little down, I pop it in, and it makes me feel good about myself, so that's why I'm saying. So, yeah, who framed Okay, so my number four is Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Um, I saw this movie a lot as a kid, um, despite its rated R rating. Uh, I saw the first one and was completely blown away by it. So when I found out there was a sequel, I was really excited to see it. And I thought there's no way the second one could be better than the first one because of how much I love the first one. But the second one takes everything that's so great about the first one and just times it by a thousand. Uh, it's one of the best movies of the 90s, in my opinion, one of the best uh, sequels of all time, uh, one of the best action blockbusters. And even though it came out in 1991, um, it still holds up very well today with practical effects and with the story and with the pacing. Um, so I'm very thankful that, that it exists. And at the time, it was my favorite sequel and science fiction film when I watched it uh, when I was maybe six or seven. Uh, so I'm very thankful for that movie. And Terminator 2, Judgment Day, is my number four. The second movie I am thankful for is The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. This is, Wes Anderson is a director that shaped how I feel about films to this day, and from when I saw Fantastic Mr. Fox and Royal Tenenbaums and Moonrise Kingdom a while back, yeah, this, The Life Aquatic is a movie that I liked when I first saw it, but I didn't know if I, like, loved it, but it definitely, like, grew on me the more times I watched it, and, like, the most recent time I watched it, it really had an impact on me, like, it's about, like, a guy who used to be great, and he's not, like, that great levels anymore, and he's, like, still aspiring to be that, which I think is pretty relatable and yeah Bill Murray is great and Owen Wilson and Kate Blanchett as well and also the David Bowie music is right up my alley because I'm a big David Bowie fan yeah I know this one is not as appreciated by some people but I personally really do enjoy it so i decided to pick this one because i was like let's put a wes anderson movie on here because that is a filmmaker that means a lot to me so yeah now let's go ahead and get into our number three 
Number two. Gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> One more time. Let's see if we have a good luck here. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Number three. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Woo! Yay! Thank you. Yeah! Jesus go. H. Christ. Woo! Oh, my God. So, my number three, I wanted to make this very, very interesting because I do have to personally thank this movie and this director for truly opening my eyes to the wild world and like what wild imagination you could truly create in a movie. I was debating, I was debating between Spy Kids and Shark Boy and Lava Girl, but I think I'm gonna go with Spy Kids. However, I do wanna give a quick mention to Shark Boy and Lava Girl because that movie and every sense of the word is a classic. Um, it's cinema. I don't wanna it's hear cinema. anything from the, I don't, I don't wanna hear anything from the haters. It is cinema. It will stand the test of time. So shout out to Shark Boy and Lava Girl. That movie is an inspiration. But I am going to go with Spy Kids because obviously that movie came out before Shark Boy and Lava Girl. And when I saw Spy Kids, I was like, wow, this movie is weird. But it's also imaginative. I love the whole uh, family dynamic. The parents are interesting. Antonio Banderas and Carla Gugino are really great as the parents. And then, of course, Alexa Vega and Daryl Sabara. Really great as the Spy Kids. Honestly, I think some of the best kids duos I've ever seen. They're really great in all three of the movies. They're the best parts about the fourth one, which, yeah, we don't talk about the fourth one, but they were still good in that one. The energy that they bring to one, two, and three is, like, really good. The first one, yeah, I do have to be very thankful for it to exist because I do have to give some of my, um, I do think some of my inspiration for my wild imagination. It really does come from Spy Kids. Robert Rodriguez, there's no denying that he has one of the most unique visions of any director in Hollywood right now. You know, whether it's like crazy stuff like Desperado, uh, more adult stuff like that, or kids movies like this, or Shark Boy and Lava Girl, or even that We Can Be Heroes movie that came to Netflix. Yeah, the guy I really have to think a lot for. It starts it all with Spy Kids, basically. And that's why I had to put in this list because uh, of the imagination, the creative mind process that I have. So that is why Spy Kids is my number three. Alrighty, alrighty. So uh, this next one is probably the least surprising one that's going to be in my entire list. But um, I can't make a thankful list of films if I'm mentioning this one. Everyone already knows what it is. It's Spike Jones, what a lot of things are. Um, this was, like, my favorite, favorite, like, art thing, like, ever for, like, over, like, a decade of my life. Um, the book growing up as a, as a little kid, like, was always, like, my favorite. And so when the film came out, um, I saw it in IMAX uh, in 2009 uh, with my family. And I remember at the time, like, I was absolutely, like, enamored with it and like there was just something about it that like really like spoke to me like it had nothing to do with like my love for like the book or anything it just there was something about it that like really like spoke to me and I remember like growing up like I'd rewatch it like I remember I got like the blu-ray like opening uh day when it that came out I remember in like 20 like 16 2017 I really started to like revisit that film a lot and when I really really tried to get back into film like seriously like in 2018 um I revisited it um, it was my first one of that year and like it really cemented itself like then in that moment that like it was like my favorite film and like um, you know the, the reasons like why like you know there's many many things I can get into but like um, I just feel like that film for me captures like far and beyond just like the feeling of what it was like when I was like a child like just like not just like the like imagination aspect of it but like just this like longing to like be in this environment that like fulfills you and like excites you and it makes you feel like warm and cozy but like you know like like deep down like it can become really like toxic and like manipulative and like um you know just the fact that it's all like surrounded by these like creatures uh that like you know the hence on the creature shop hell build and like, the puppeteering and just like there's just so much stuff to it that i just absolutely adore i fell in love with this film like as like a kid and like i found love again as a teenager and then I'm an adult, like, I still absolutely adore this film. It's still one of my favorite films of all time. The music in it by, like, Karen O and, like, all, like, her, like, little kids she got for it is, like, 
incredible. Yeah, no, I love this one. It's hard to explain, really, cause, because I'd have to go back to, like, real, like, childhood stuff. But, uh, you know, I love this one, and I'm so thankful for it. Uh, because I, I genuinely am, like, I wouldn't, like, be the same person I am without it. Like, genuinely. So, yeah, shout out to where the wild things are. Oh, boy. This is going to be kind of a weird one. Uh, this came into my life when I really didn't care what I was watching. Like, I was watching the Schwarzenegger films. I didn't really care. I was watching, like, you know, The Terminator. I was watching Die Hard. I was watching, you know, The Terminator 2. But this film, this film right here, is the origin of the term Brian Approved. This is the Brian movie. I gotta give a mention of The Last Action Hero. Uh, this movie made me really obsessed with meta movies, how movies became self-aware when I discovered that was a thing. This is, like, the first time I ever noticed whoa, they're actually talking about something that happens in the movie. I'm like, what? Like, my eight-year-old brain was blown away. I was watching it on, like, a really bad DVD transfer. It was, like, one of those, like, full-screen DVDs or whatever. You know, this movie, I think for a lot, for a lot, because every time I go back to it, I love that movie magic from that time period. In general, my appreciation for so, so you know, film, and this is coming from someone who's never seen a movie like on film in the theater. I grew up in the digital era, I went to the movies until I was like 10 years old. Um, long story short, I was traumatized by Muppet Vision 3D out of all movies as a kid. <laughs> that traumatized me. I don't know, I don't know why. Muppets, Muppets traumatized me. Uh, it's so different than most action movies now. It was more practical. It's imaginative. It had like the Spielbergian vibe to it that I do miss seeing, honestly, the modern blockbusters. I'm like, I feel like more people should watch this movie. It makes me think of why I love going to the movies. Why do I love going to this place to escape from like reality a bit for like two hours? You know, just see all of this excitement, you know, the smell of popcorn, you know, your drink. The, the appreciation of the big screen. It's one of the loudest movies I've ever heard in my life. Um, definitely watch this movie. Very thankful for this movie. So, yeah, that's uh, my, uh, this is number three, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just to make sure, because this. No, it's number 14. What? <laughs> oh, man, that's my number three. <laughs> <clears throat> For uh, my number three, I'm personally going to go with uh, your name. I remember back in 2017, uh, that back when the movie was coming out. <clears throat> I heard about it. I heard making numbers like, oh, it's, it managed to beat Spirited Away at the box office. And I didn't think much about the movie. Later that year, I decided to watch the movie. And I was an emotional fucking mess after that movie. <laughs> it was, it truly blew me away. That was the first time I discovered the filmmaker Makoto Shinkai, who I become, who I'm now think has become one of the new goats of cinema it's to me one of the great modern love stories modern romance movies to me are very hard because even though i'm i love the genre i love romance movies i'm a romantic person myself when you come when you get to know me but a good romance movie i'm a very picky bitch when it comes to that your name just struck that chord with me it was a perfect mix of sci-fi fantasy a little bit of freaky friday mixed with a romance story and the way these mitsuha and kanada get to know each other just by experiencing each other's lives swapping bodies and they you get we get to explore their lives see their perspective and uh, they learn they, they fall in love with each other through their through each other's experiences mm -hmm and perspectives and in that climax where that without giving it away you're like fighting back the tears the animation some of the best 
2D animation I've seen in modern his in the modern history of 2D as the 2D medium. Uh, the way rain is animated, the way uh, the trees and towns are painted, the way the way that people are walking around just doing their own thing, the way social media actually plays a message. Probably the best, in my opinion, the best use of social media in a film where social media actually plays an integral part of the story without coming across as dated. It hit, also hit me personally because uh, I had a lot of personal crap going on in my life, and that movie came out at a really good time. I felt really connected with the characters. I felt really connected to Miss Yuha and her situation and her family and... I also just love the music as well. The music is probably a, a character of its own. The where the music actually plays an integral role of the story. It adds to the way of story. The pop music in this film elevates the story for me. And to me, it's also become one of the great modern film soundtracks of all time. It's a movie that I eventually introduced to to my mother, which now that's become one of her favorite movies of all time. Where we got in the book, the book, the manga. Every time Mikoto Shinka has come out with a new movie, we're always there to check it out immediately. So that is my number three, a film that changed me personally, creatively, and emotionally. My third film is not migration. Don't try that again with me, motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> oh, migration! Oh, too. You played yourself there. Uh, you ducked your sister. I, I said it. It's Minions Rise of Guru. Oh, I swear to Christ. <laughs> okay. yeah, I'm gonna be trying to talk about the con they had eventually. It's okay. Oh, you will see that I will never talk about it. Ah, oh, really? Really? Okay. Uh, my third movie is a movie that I believe was already mentioned, and that is 2021's Suicide Squad. Um, I am very thankful for this movie because, as everybody had a tough year in the year 2020 and in parts of 2021, or and, and you know, during that time, I you know lost my motivation to really do anything but specifically watch movies. I didn't go to a theater once the theaters closed, I didn't go to the theater until. When A Quiet Place Part 2 came out. But even then, I really didn't have motivation to go to the movie. But uh, the Suicide Squad, despite being fooled with Suicide Squad, the 2016 one, uh, I was very excited for it. I really, really wanted to go see it. And then I saw it, and I, it was one of the best theater experiences of my life. I absolutely love the movie, and that really gave me my motivation to start going out and going to the theater again. So uh, that is why I'm thankful for the suicide. My number three is the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, so I still consider this to be the best trilogy of all time. Um, I had not never read the books, and my brother had told me about these movies for years. And I finally decided to watch them, and I fell in love with all of them. Um, the third one especially, uh, which I think is a masterpiece that just fires on all cylinders. So um, I know when we talk about trilogies, a lot of people say, oh, well, the third one kind of dropped the ball, or it's not very consistent. But to me, this is that rare trilogy where um, every movie gets better as it goes on. Um, and I'm just so thankful for it. I mean, visually, it's just amazing. Um, storytelling is beautiful. And, um, you know, I can watch those movies any day of the of the week, despite how long they are. So Lord of the Rings trilogy is my number three. The third movie I am thankful for is one about a guy who takes a road trip with his friends to Hollywood to become a movie star. If you're wondering what film I'm talking about, it is, of course, the original classic, The Muppet Movie. I hadn't always, like, been aware of the Muppets, but I decided to check this movie out, like, at the end of last year. On the 10th anniversary of 
the star Charles Durning's death, coincidentally. It quickly became a comfort film of mine, and just knowing how it was made is really cool. Before that, there was only like the Muppet Show, which was like set in a theater type room. Yeah, they had like puppets riding bikes, which of course they expanded on with the great Muppet Caper, and yeah, Jim Henson was just a genius, and I think he was gone too soon, and also Frank Oz and Jerry Nelson and Richard Hunt and Dave Goles as well worked on this movie, and they're all pretty f dude fantastic work so yeah another movie i recommend to everyone if you haven't seen it already now we go ahead and get to our number two gobble 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 number two gobble 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 my number two it's a horror comedy it is really when i think about the first horror comedy I've truly seen, I have to kind of thank this movie because it kind of sparked my interest in horror comedies after I saw it in theaters. I have decided to pick Drag Me to Hell, directed by Sam Raimi. Growing up, horror movies, I was pretty much very anti-horror movies. Like, I pretty much refused to watch any horror movies because I was always worried about them, like, scaring me and giving me nightmares. My family was big into watching horror movies. My little brother, oh my god, my little brother was into watching horror movies, but anytime my family said, hey, let's watch, like, The Grudge, or let's watch The Ring, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm out, y'all have fun, I'm going to my room. So, my mom literally dragged me, pun intended, to see Drag Me to Hell in theaters, because I didn't want to see the movie, because for what he said, I was worried the movie was going to scare me, the movie was going to give me nightmares. Turned out the movie was far from scary. It was actually really funny. And in all the best ways. It had the really creative horror, but also it had a lot of funny parts, which I was genuinely surprised by. And it was gross too, but like in a good way, as weird as that may sound. It had some genuinely like gross but funny parts, just the mixture is uh, really good. And keep in mind, I have not seen the Evil Dead uh, trilogy at this time. So technically speaking, I guess this is my introduction uh, to an Evil Dead-ish kind of movie since his style is implanted in Drag Me to Hell. I think the performances are solid. I really appreciate how creative Sam Raimi gets with the scares. At that time, it truly was unlike anything I had ever seen. I do have to thank my mom for literally dragging my butt to see us in theaters and i'm glad she did to this day because it made for one of the most memorable theatrical experiences ever for me and i do have to thank it for um getting me to appreciate the horror comedy genre and that's why drag me to hell i put in my random order of number two all righty all righty so the next one i have to talk about uh is probably what i have the most to talk about like to say about it um, and that is David Lynch's Twin Peaks Firewalk with me, yes. So this one is an interesting one to talk about just because it requires like a lot of context as to why it's on here. Uh, I mean, people that know me know like how much uh, Twin Peaks means to me, but um, you know, I'll include, you know, the film, obviously. Uh, so just talk about it. Back in uh, 2018, uh, I fell into like a really, really like um, and like, I've, I've struggled with depression my entire life, but I fell into a really, really deep, like depression. A lot of things happened as a result of that and just like anxiety attacks were like the worst I ever had been. And so the end of 2018, I basically spent a lot of time like alone in my house and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it was just like a very like secluded, isolated time. And I really had nothing to like look forward to besides like Celtics games at the time and like occasionally going out with like my mom to like the movies and stuff like that and then 2019 came around and I remember like I was like okay like I want to like I gotta do like something else besides just like watching movies or whatever and I was like okay well like it's still watching like filmmaking type stuff but let me try to get the television so I started at uh, Twin Peaks because uh, I was like the one show I mainly wanted to watch and I remember I watched the pilot um and I was like oh, I was like okay like you know shout out to the pilot but then that next night uh, I watched the entire rest of season one and I would like, like literally like all, like I just watched all the rest of it. 
Uh, and I remember, like, I took, like, like a melatonin. I was taking melatonin at the time. So I fought through, like, melatonin, like, sedation just to, like, finish the last two episodes of season one. And, like, it was amazing. Uh, I took, like, a, like, a four or five day break. And then I watched season two in, like, four days, I think. And it was just so, like, freeing. And, like, it gave me, like, something to, like, look forward to and be excited about and, like, talk about and, like, connect with people about. And, like, you know, it means a lot to me to look back on that time and, um, the main thing, though, with Twin Peaks that I really think about um, is Fire Walk With Me and The Return. Um, and so just to focus on the Fire Walk With Me, um, those two works, like, encapsulate so much, just, like, e- even nowadays, um, I had the privilege of, I was able to see Fire Walk With Me two times in theaters last year. Um, and just every time I watch that film, especially, like, in, like, in theaters, it, it's really, really hard to describe, but it's, like, when you've been in, like, abuse situations, and, like, specifically when you've had, like, 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 like men abuse you, and just, like, as, like, as, like, as, like, a woman, like, you feel like, you, you just, like, like, the way that you see yourself, like, just crumble down because of it. The film, like, addresses abuse in a very, very, like, sensitive way, but also, like, the subject matters that it's dealing with are so heavy um, and I think David Lynch deserves, like, a, so much credit. Obviously, Mark Frost, too. But, like, David Lynch deserves, like, a lot of credit for handling it in such, like, um, a way that is so, like, sensitive. But also, like, like story-wise, like, actually, like, making sense for, like, the narrative. You know, David Lynch, I feel like, has always handled, um, at least in my opinion, I think, female characters. Um, honestly, probably the best out of any, like, male director, honestly, ever. I mean, I really feel like, besides Mulholland Drive, like, this is, like, the epitome with, like, Laura Palmer, just, like, how well, like, he captures, like, femininity, womanhood, and just, like, being being forced to grow up faster than, like, you should, and, like, um, just, like, childhood abuse in general. Like, like, it all comes together when it comes to, like, the Twin Peaks lore, um, in a way that elevates Twin Peaks, and it brings it into a, a, a place where, like, the horrors of it really like come out but like as a viewer for me i'm like i'm thankful for it because like it brings me to that vulnerable place that like i i i want to go to in art and like because it speaks to me the most the final scene in that film like when i first watched it i literally bawled my eyes out like and like i i i i cried during like the first two seasons but like never like that it just has such a power that no other work quite has so yeah Throwback, well, I almost bought that movie <laughs> before oh, watching hey, that hey, listen, listen. It, all, it all worked out, Brian. It all worked oh, out. Oh my god! It all I would have been like, "Wait, what just happened?" N- it oh, it no. all worked out. <laughs> oh my god! I dodged a bullet. Um, my number two came at a time where um, I was getting off my antidepressants, and I was having like a lot of confusion in my life so um this movie really helped me a lot with the way i see writing um i gotta give a mention to blinded by the light without this movie i wouldn't have my favorite singer of all time bruce springsteen i never listened to any springsteen songs prior to this movie so after this movie my brother's like okay hey, i'm gonna show you some more music from the boss uh, this is a film that spoke to me a lot because I never like really appreciated songwriting as much before. I just listened to it, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's just music. But when I heard the lyrics to Thunder Road, which was used in the movie, I was like, whoa, uh, music can really express uh, someone's emotions. You know, uh, I am someone who has um, gone improved on my writing uh, skills over the years and I honestly never knew I'd be a writer. I'm not writing any books or anything obviously. I'm just um, trying to get um, like for the past um, decade almost I've been trying to get on TV. I'm still trying to get on TV uh, to give um, my speech about mental health because that is just so important right now. The way I've been writing it, it feels like you're right song and it really changed my perspective on that. And it really shows how much I'm an old soul with music. Like, anyone who ever meets me, they're going to be like, what, you're into that stuff? I'm like, yeah, I love Springsteen. And they're like, uh, they're like, literally mind blown a bit. You know, um, anytime I mention an old movie, and they're like, can you know that? I'm like, um, I guess I got a good knowledge. Literally one of my favorite soundtracks ever. Um, it's one of my favorite um, films of 
2010s, and it really pushes me a bit more to get me motivated. And I do plan to rewatch it again. I, I just I adore I adore that movie so much. I'm so thankful to have it. Anyone who's out there who is like trying to write something or give a speech, just write from the heart. Um, listen to it, and I think you'll pull it off. That's my advice. So yeah, my number two. Oh, we're down to two. <clears throat> All right, this is going to be a pain in the ass. You know, I think I'm just going to pick go and talk about Andrew's going to love this. Uh, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> hey. This is literally a movie that is literally the definition of my childhood. And uh, arguably, it's to me the best Scooby-Doo movie ever. To give context to when this movie was coming out, Back in the late 80s and early 90s, Scooby-Doo was pretty much dead, like very much dead. And the one thing that had come out during the 90s was Scooby-Doo in Arabian Nights. Understandably, no one, no Scooby-Doo fan talks about it. You can't even call, call it a Scooby-Doo movie even because Scooby and Shaggy are barely in their own movie. And it was pretty boring. It did nothing. And it was pre at the time the final nail in the coffin. So in the 90s, Warner Brothers was like, final, let's do something Scooby-Doo. We don't care how it is. We'll just make it. So ultimately, they just let the writers, directors, and animators just do whatever the hell they want. And then that's how Zombie Island came out to be and just blew everything up. Like, to people who can't stand Scooby-Doo movies coming out every single year, you can blame Zombie Island's success for that. Because... It didn't just do well on t on DVD sales. It was critically received. It was it probably had the most TV reruns back when it premiered in the late nineties. What I can say that people like and I like about it is it's the atmosphere. The animation to me still holds up to this day, almost cinematic level. And I think it was really good to have a Japanese anime studio uh, do the animation for this and the eventual three movies which is ghost alien Raiders, and cyber chase which are also banger movies i also love the fact that the movie understands scooby-doo it does something new at the time it deconstructs the franchise without disrespecting it without parodying it it shows the gang as people who generally love and care for each other and you really felt like they grew as people in that movie and throughout the eventual movies after it it wasn't just a Scooby-Doo movie. It was generally a horror movie, a fun night. To me, it's one of my favorite 90s horror movies because it generally was terrifying. And in fact, when I was a little kid, when I watched it, that movie scared the absolute shit out of me with those zombies. The music, I can, literally the other night, I was singing all the songs from that movie with my friend Brian in near perfect uh detail just because why the f hell not that was you know? like two weeks ago <laughs> yeah i just randomly started just like singing it's terror time again the ghosts are here and next thing you know it started me singing the hex girls but no uh i guess you could say it's not just zombie on it's, it's the whole i called the mook animation era because that's the animation studio that did the animation for these films i honestly think nowadays with scooby-doo um we need to have something similar to that vibe not an imitation but something where it's just you're letting people do what the hell they want while still retaining the vibe of scooby-doo and then just flourishing in something like that i'm gonna say this right now uh james gunn you stole the story of zombie island for your scooby movie you know that's my hot take and that's my number two is zombie island and essentially which just goes the alien raiders and cyber chase in fact if i go on an island and i was a like, castaway like i was tom hanks with the soccer ball just leave me with those movies and a tv and i'll be just fine all right my number two is scream. Um, this is for uh, ice cream. What for ice cream? Oh, <laughs> a few minutes later, Jesus, uh, Christ of Nazareth. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. 
Um, anyway, uh, yeah, the movie I chose is Scream for Ice Cream. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, uh, I this movie I'm extremely thankful for it because it is a, a movie that has inspired me a lot creatively. I, there's so much that I, I want to like like do and make, and it's all because of this movie. Uh, it's such an innovative movie. It changed the horror genre as we know it. Like, it wouldn't, like, the horror genre and the slasher genre terrifier wouldn't be coming out if scream didn't come out like oh, yeah. and i'm willing to die on that hill like a lot of like the this like totally killer like which is a movie i really enjoyed that came out this year like we wouldn't have that like it, it, it like changed the horror genre for the better we wouldn't have scream 7 coming out pretty soon ha 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 but anyway yeah no it's it's just i'm thankful because it's such an innovative and creative film it changed the the way i look at just movies and it, it just inspired me so much creatively i definitely wouldn't be wanting to do what i want to do in my life if it weren't for this movie my number two is batman begins um so Batman is my favorite superhero of all time. Um, I grew up watching the Michael Keaton movies. And I saw the other two, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, not nearly as much as the Michael Keaton ones for obvious reasons. But um, when Batman Begins came out in theaters, I was optimistic because we really needed a much better movie than Batman and Robin. Um, and when that came out, I, I saw it in theaters and I was completely blown away. I was like, thank God. Thank you, Christopher Nolan, for making this movie. I mean, we, we needed this. And, um, of course, as you all know, uh, The Dark Knight came out, which is a sequel to Batman Begins, and Dark Knight Rises came out. Um, and Dark Knight is my favorite of the three, but Batman Begins is the one I'm thankful for because, obviously, without that one, we wouldn't have the other two. And it's uh, it's groundbreaking in some sort of way. You know, a lot of other movies rebooted their uh, respective franchises. And um, I don't want to say try to copy that Batman Begins, but you can see the influence that that movie had with those movies. So I'm thankful for Batman Begins. Uh, Batman is my favorite superhero, and I, I just love the tril Batman trilogy so much from Nolan. So Batman Begins is my number two. The fourth movie I am thankful for is Spider-Man. Spider-Man and Batman were my introduction to superheroes growing up, and especially like the first two Spider-Man movies. Definitely watched the first one a lot as a kid. Like, I think Tobey Maguire is a great Spider-Man, and also like. Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin as well. Second Willem Dafoe movie on my list, actually. It's interesting, and also we share the same birthday, so that's cool. Yeah, this movie is a classic for sure. The first two were, like, I think the first DVDs that, like, were mine personally, because I asked for these DVDs for Christmas when I was a kid, when I was five, and I got both of them, and I still have those DVDs to this day, so that's like a special memory to me, having those, and I still collect DVDs and Blu-rays to this day, and I have like over 1,500 movies in my collection, so that's where it all began. Okay, everyone. Now we're going to get into our number one movie out of order or ranked uh, the movie that we are the most thankful for. It's number one. It's number one. Alrighty, so my number one, I really want to make it a special one. What is just that movie that I'm just like very thankful for how significant it is for me. And my number one, I have decided to choose The Lion King, the animated film, just to be clear, the animated film. And uh, <laughs> the reason I have decided, like really thinking about it, why it's the 
most significant movie of my life is because my parents saw The Lion King in theaters, and The Lion King actually came out on my mom's birthday. So my mom and my dad saw The Lion King opening night. I was in my mom's belly because the movie came out on June 24th. I was born on July 13th. So obviously I came out of my mom's belly a few weeks later. And then on top of that, on my first birthday party, my mom actually threw me a Lion King themed birthday party. Obviously I don't remember that because I was a one year old baby. But uh, for what she told me, she went all out. She spent more money than she probably intended. Um, but she apparently went all out and threw me this big Lion King themed birthday party. And the fact that she went out of her way to do that for a one year old baby, that's like, wow, that's dedication. I guess it was always meant to just be my favorite Disney animated movie because I've, I've grown up with so many Disney animated movies. I pretty much have grown up with everything you could think of. You know, I grew up obviously with Pinocchio. I grew up with Dumbo. Obviously, I grew up with The Fox and the Hound. I grew up with Bambi and, uh, you know, Tarzan and etc. The list goes on, but like... In the, home. The... Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. But The Lion King is just that one movie where we're like, really think about it. It really is just like <clears throat> my favorite uh, Disney animated movie ever. The animation for 1994, the animation is just jaw-dropping. I still truly believe it's some of the best 2D animation, not just from Disney, but just like ever. Um, it's a timeless movie. Uh, the score, obviously, by Hans Zimmer, it's a cliche to say it, but just masterful, masterful work. Definitely up there for some of the best scores he's ever done. I also have to mention the musical numbers, obviously, because the musical numbers in The Lion King are absolutely iconic, from Can You Feel the Love Tonight, to I Can't Wait to Be King, to Hakuna Matata, which is, that one's iconic. And of course, Be Prepared by Scar. That's another amazing one. All the musical numbers in this one are truly top-notch in my humble opinion. I had to mention the musical numbers, obviously, because they are what add to the atmosphere of the film and the overall storytelling of it. And I have to mention the opening scene too, because the opening scene was an absolutely breathtaking way to open the movie. It was just, it's just truly an opening scene that takes my breath away. And, you know, it's a perfect way to just get me hooked from literally the minute the movie opens. Just love everything about that opening scene. Obviously, voice acting from everyone is incredible. And of course, Timon and Pumbaa, just one of the best comedic duos ever in animation. I just love everything about The Lion King from how the storyline was told, to what I said about the animation looking incredible, to the score. It just has everything that I want to be immersed by when I watch not just an anime a movie, but a movie in general. Of course, it makes me cry when... Uh, yes, spoiler alert, if you somehow have not seen Animated Lion King at this point, when Mufasa dies, every time, no! I always cry. I always cry at that moment. Doesn't matter how many times I've seen The Lion King. It doesn't matter when I know it's going to come. I always just cry when the Mufasa death scene happens. Always breaks my heart. But yeah, the movie is very uh, special to me for all those reasons. That's why... I have to say it's probably the most significant movie, um, yeah, probably ever in my life. Like, honestly, I have a lot to thank for um, with The Lion King. And I actually, because it happens to be next to me, I still even have The Lion King uh, piggy bank to this day. Um, I have this that is really my whole life. What are you going to say, Andrew? I said that is beautiful. Oh, thank you, thank you. I know. Mufasa's like, why, thank you, Andrew. But yeah, I, I've had this piggy bank for years. It's still going strong. Always just an absolute awe every time I watch The Lion King. And that's why, yeah, it's the movie I picked for my number one. Okay, okay, okay. So, I have a little plot twist uh, for all of y'all. So the last one I'm mentioning is actually going to be two movies uh, because they're tied because I am not uh, picking one or the other. Um, the, the, I guess for number one, we're going to talk about my mom's favorite film and my dad's favorite film. 
Uh, so my dad, we'll talk about my dad first, uh, because he would want me to talk about my mom last. Uh, so um, my dad's favorite film is a creep show uh, with George A. Romero, uh, the late great George A. Romero, always written by Stephen King. Um, it's it's one of my favorite films also. Uh, my dad introduced this movie to me when I was like five years old, way too young. Uh, it scared me very much, but um, I love this film so much. It's one of my favorite horror films to this day. And just like, you know, something me and my, like, my father can really, like, bond over. And, like, I got, like, I got, I got the 4K a few months ago. I got, like, the fancy set. And, like, I gave him, like, this, like, lobby cards. And, like, he has, like, a bunch of, like, Scarface lobby cards from, like, the 80s. Like, the Brian De Palma one. That's, that's his second pair of film. Um, and so, you know, it's just kind of cool, like, to bond over, like, collectible stuff like that. And, but just obviously, like, the, the, the aesthetics have it. And just, like, the emotions, like, the silly, goofy emotions <laughs> that movie makes us feel is just so, like, fun. And I just love that film. And so it just obviously I'm thankful just because like, you know, that's something my dad can bond over that. It's my dad's like favorite film. Uh, and then like, you know, my mom, um, my mom's favorite film of all time is uh, Rob Reiner's The Princess Bride. Uh, that's my mom's favorite film of all time. Uh, and I also love that film. Uh, I have actually uh, in my collection, uh, my mom gave me her original VHS copy of uh, the film and uh I've only watched it one time on VHS. Uh, I uh, I have a VCR that still works. So I've only watched that table one time, uh, and I don't know if I ever will again, just because like you know like that's just like where it all began for my mom that film and like um, film and this has been such an important part of my life and like that's like the main film my mom, mom and I can bond over. Like we saw it in theaters last year for like Valentine's Day together with uh, my Grammy. That's my mom's mom and just like um, you know it just it just means just like so much to like my mother and just like. Um, you know, just seeing my mom just be so like happy and just like overjoyed of like 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 like, like a piece of work like that, uh, and uh, yeah, it's just it's just amazing. I, I love that film. Uh, I think both films that I mentioned are great, but yeah, no, I figured I put a little plot just in there because I'm I'm not gonna pick one or the other. Uh, those are those are you know equally important. Uh, and so yeah, so shout out to those two films, and you know, I'm just thankful because like th they're my parents' favorites. Like that that's the only reason I need. Uh, so. Yeah, so, uh, and I know I love both of them, really, but, like, you know, they're, they're the, they are my parents' favorites, so I wanted to uh, give a shout-out to that. The fuck? So, I... Huh? Wait, what? You're Spider-Man now? Well, um, nice transition. I had to change my wardrobe because, um, um, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to pick two movies. Um, my number one yes. are the Amazing Spider-Man films. These films have been really important to me um i was unfortunately an outsider when i was in school i was a bit of a weirdo i was just trying to look for friends and everyone just looked at me in a certain way and i just hated it so much um the first film came out after um i was just so depressed um i had to go to a different middle school my closest friend at the time went to a different middle school and i just felt really devastated about it and i just i don't know we're, life was just so complicated at the time i was just it, it wasn't fun it was like the lowest point of my life and that movie really those these movies really have changed my life from you know going from middle school to adulthood um, it, it always feels different each viewing because I think about how much these movies have played a part in my life. The Amazing Spider-Man actually helped me understand grief and what I was going through. I honestly don't know who I would be without them. And I've always been in love with the character ever since the Tony McGuire films. Um, I definitely felt destroyed even though the leaks were out there, I did cry when Andrew showed up in No Way Home. I, I was wearing this jacket on that Friday night, and I asked my brother's friend, do you have any tissues? And he said no. And I'm like, well, we have to lay it out. I'm like, dang. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. Oh, my goodness. I'm just so glad that these movies exist. And... The one scene that really helps me get through my week every day, really, is a Gwen Stacy's speech. Um, that I rewatched that movie, the second film, the week before I graduated um, my homeschool program, and 
really got me more emotional than the previous viewings. So um, that's all I got to say about these films, really. I'm just so thankful Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man is getting more appreciated, you know. But I've always been number one, day one fan of this actor. Yeah, that's my number one, both amazing Spider-Man films. Um, so, yeah. You know what, fuck, I'm going to cheat, too. I'm going to talk about two movies as well, because if I don't talk about either one of them, uh, I'm probably going to regret regret this. So I'm going to go with the first one, Hunchback and Notre Dame. That is my personal favorite Disney movie. It's, to me, like what, uh, an epic of sorts. One of the most complex, mature uh films that disney has made in their animation library it's funny that for a movie that's rated g it's like gotten the most the most mature deep uh, exploration of religious persecution religious exploration exploitation and finding god in different ways uh the music is powerful the performances are powerful the the scope and feel of it just feels grander than it should be and i'm so glad a lot more people are discovering this movie and i'm so glad that in a way disney is acknowledging it by doing a remake even though i don't want a remake um but no this was this is one of my personal favorite movies of all time it's what uh recently a couple birthdays ago uh my mom gifted me the, the cardboard standee of hunchback of Notre Dame when they did the VHS release back in the 90s. And I also have the the poster for it as well. It's, in fact, it's staring right at me as I'm talking about it. It truly, to me, showed the, pop, the emotional epicness that the art form can do and the maturity level it can reach. Now for the next movie <clears throat> of, of my two, is the a film by Mizaki Yauza called The Night is Short Walk on Girl. And that is a movie where if you see my work and people who see me draw and stuff and all that, you could probably pick the, the way my style is. You can instantly go back to that film style and instantly pick up that that's an influence in my work. Like the most, it has the most influence of how I craft art now. To me, one of the funniest movies ever. One of the most personally uh, personal movies out there about what do you do in one night? How much can you do in one night? How are you going to make that night memorable out of every night in your life? I like the complexities of how characters drink. I like the the complexities of what is fun, uh, what is acceptable, and time. And just the animation and the art style. The art style is what stuck out to me the most. It's It felt the most free. It felt the most unconventional, unmainstream. It showed me that I could, with the skill set I'm at, I could accomplish something like that and not appease a big studio or a big corporation. And I, I could just step i can just flap my wings and just burst it out so those are both my number ones a film that impacted me emotionally epically and a film that has really pretty much become the origin story of my art style pretty much my last film i'm going to talk about is the dark knight um uh, very thankful for this movie. It's my favorite movie of all time. Uh, has my favorite performance in, of all time with Heath Ledger's Joker. And it, it just, uh, yeah, it's my favorite. It got me into movies. It showed me what movies could be. And, um, yeah, that's that. My number one movie that I am the most thankful for is Toy Story. Um, I love them all, but specifically, I'm going to talk about the first one. Um, it's uh, 
movie I can literally watch any day at any time and never get tired of it. Um, it's not my favorite movie of all time, but to me, it's probably the most rewatchable movie of all time. Um, it obviously it's groundbreaking for animation, C a CGI animated movie specifically, um, and it has everything: the, the comedy, the uh, intensity, the drama. Um, it's so entertaining. I just I love it so much. Um, I it's the movie I'm thankful for the most. And Toy Story is my number one. And we're at the grand finale. The fifth and final movie I am thankful for is, of course, the deep philosophical masterpiece, Turkey Town. Just, the animation in this thing is just brilliant. That squirrel is just one of the best images ever put to film. I, I can't, I'm sorry, I'm... Some people are probably yelling at this, but yeah, of course, no, my, the actually, the fifth movie I am thankful for is Punch Drunk Love. Saw it for the first time when I was 16, and it really had an impact on me. I, of course, Adam Sandler is known for his, like, goofy comedies like his Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, Big Daddy, etc. But this is like definitely like more mature than those and I really enjoyed it. Like the cinematography is beautiful and besides Sandler, like Emily Watson, Philip Seymour Hoffman and Louise Guzman are fantastic as well. John Bryan with another great score. This is just a great movie. Like Paul Thomas Anderson is one of my favorite directors and this is like really the one that cemented that. Like even though I like Magnolia and Boogie Nights more nowadays, like this one will always hold a special place in my heart. Also, it's 90 minutes, so it's a good watch if you haven't seen it already. Okay, everyone. And uh, that is the list. That is our uh, five movies we're most thankful for. Definitely very thankful to have all of you to be here and tell me all your movies that you're thankful for. I loved hearing all of your lists. Timothy Anderson, good friend. Could not make it, but I promised him I would go ahead and read off his thankful list very quick. So from Timothy Anderson, number five, the entire Harry Potter franchise. Number four, the Shawshank Redemption. Number three, Top Gun Maverick. Number two, Spider-Man 2. And number one, Edward Scissorhands. Lastly, I made a post about how if you want a shout out in the video to give me the movies you're thankful for. From Epictastic Joshua underscore YT, Lord of the Rings, the entire trilogy of course, Ray, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Harry Potter 3, and the Peanuts movie. Be sure you subscribe to the channel. I have my letterbox, of course. I got uh, Twitter. I refuse to call it X. It's still Twitter to me. Uh, I got Facebook. I got my Instagram. Comment below. Uh, what are your five movies that you are most thankful for? What is your favorite Thanksgiving food? Uh, I'd be curious. What's like your go-to? And then the final and most important question is, should Andrew Hayes go support his kind and see migration in theaters? I would very, very much love to hear the comment section on that. And you know, just to make this fun, when I give everyone their outros, maybe if you want, you could say, what's your favorite Thanksgiving food? I'm crazy for cranberries. It's literally not Thanksgiving without cranberries for me. I love cranberries so much. I love my turkey and I love my stuffing, but believe it or not, the one I look forward to the most every Thanksgiving is cranberries for me. That is definitely my go-to. And now to give the outros, thank you so much, Violet, uh, for joining this video. Yeah, well, uh, thank, you. thank you very much. you you got to thank me for joining. I want to thank all of you for your lovely uh, stories. I, I enjoyed hearing all of them, uh, genuinely. 
And uh, yeah, and then um, as 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 the vegan white girl that doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving, what is my favorite Thanksgiving food? Let me say um, anything vegan that you like to have for Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, I guess just to uh, get the vegan on uh, whatever that tofu turkey thing is, the tofu turkey. I don't know. I have it for on Christmas every year, and it's pretty great. But it's like it's it's pretty great. That's, that's all I got. The the tofu turkey thing and also shout out to vegan mac and cheese even though most vegan mac and cheeses are not good but still mac and cheese though like is pretty iconic um so yeah so that that that's it uh but <laughs> uh, thank you that's honey uh genuinely i really appreciate it and uh you know and i look forward to you uh being back here uh hopefully uh late next month early january for a traditional return back to these and so yeah First of all, everyone tell Andrew to please watch Migration. It's going to be the greatest movie of all time. It's going to be better than Oppenheimer. It's going to be better than Barbie. It's going to be better than Waka. Hey, dude, part two. Um, thank you so much. Um, this is actually my first video I've been on YouTube in a minute because I am actually currently taking a break um, due to you know, taking care of my uh, mental health. Um, I want to thank everyone here um, listening to my stories about um, my experiences with these movies, you know. Um, I know the holidays are going to be difficult for some people, but just remember that um, you are loved and not alone, and um, talk to someone who is um, very important in your life. Um, text someone and get some help. You can follow me on YouTube, uh, TikTok, which I do sometimes, Twitter, I don't care if it's called X, whatever. Instagram. Oh, and do you have a go-to Thanksgiving food? Uh, pumpkin pie. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. Thank you so much, Jordan. <laughs> well, um, as usual, you can follow me on my YouTube channel where I promote uh, post some videos and short films and sometimes a feature. Worry, it's uh, a gothic horror short coming out. Uh, I don't know when, but it's going to be coming up very soon. Weary is now up on Jordan's channel and on the Tiger Paws Entertainment channel. So if you want to watch Jordan's short film, you can watch it on either channels. It is happily available now on YouTube. Please spread the word on it on Letterboxd, social media. It would mean the world to both of us. And you can follow me on instagram even i'm not as active on it anymore and you can follow me on my twitter jordan mj farrell at jmjf bro and yes i'm calling it twitter not some stupid uh porn site that uh is stealing the name of <laughs> for my favorite thanksgiving food i like me my roasted turkey and i like my deviled eggs to me if i don't have my deviled eggs you know it's not thanksgiving if i'm watching my thanksgiving parade and I don't have my deviled eggs, you know, uh, I'm going to throw a chair through the window. Yeah, it was fun doing this. I'm not watching Migration, so don't get yes, your Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> Andrew. Because, yes. uh, Andrew, we're, we're both birds, you know? We're, we're both <laughs> birds. Like, you're a duck and I'm a penguin. Every single penguin thing that comes to theaters, I go see. So we're finally getting a duck thing, and you're just not going to go see it? Yeah, that's a really? good point, Andrew. Yeah, that's a good Have point. you at well, least from, seen DuckTales? a fellow bird lover who's literally a I, bird, like, come on. I will say this. If you <laughs> think I should go see Migration, and you're hoping I, I should go see Migration, then it's going to be a bad day to be you when I don't see Migration. A dag, dag. Wow. Well, it looks, look, looks like this holiday season about to be real bleak for me then. What Diego, have you had to send you, on Diego, TV? you got to promise us you're going to force Andrew somehow to see Migration with you. You yeah. didn't trick him into think it's another movie. Did you, I was, did, that was exactly what I was thinking. Just pretend you're seeing yeah. Ferrari or something. <laughs> And as for my favorite Thanksgiving food, it's the fat nap that I take right after I eat it. Wow. And thank you very much, Diego. Uh, thank you very much for having me on again. Uh, it was great hearing all of your choices and me sharing my uh, you know, top five movies I'm most thankful for. Uh, in regards to 
my favorite Thanksgiving dish, I have to say homemade mac and cheese. Can't go wrong with that. Ooh, I love that. Thank you once again to 22 Tiger Dude and Co. for having me in this video. It's a shame it had to be delayed from the future, but it is what it is. I'm excited to see what y'all's lists are when I do, and we will be back in 2024 20, for the spring anticipated video. So, yay! Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Eat well, stay safe. And yeah, like what Brian was uh, said, which was beautiful, by the way, Brian, you know, I know the holidays can be hard for a lot of people, absolutely. Obviously, just make sure you check up on that person, tell them you love them. Mental health is definitely very important, especially around the holidays. So everyone, this is 22 Turkey Dude here with Violet, Brian, Jordan, Andrew, who will see migration, and Diego, and Henry Ewing. <laughs> and don't forget that we're going to get our gobble gobble on and have... Turkey Cowboy! I, I, I still got that time. All right, I got no turkey power. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. We hope you enjoy this video as much as we enjoyed making it. And Tiger Power!